Hello everyone, I am 754 and I would like to welcome you to my first ever review on the channel. A few months back, Nintendo decided to announce uh, the, re the release of uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. So because of that, I was like, yeah, why not? Let's just go ahead. Let's try to write something about Pikmin, you know, those little creatures that go in there, you throw them, uh, they collect whatever, uh, etc, etc, etc. So, here we are today, that's what we're talking today, I'm sorry, we were going to do something else, my bad. So let's get to into it, shall we? Pikmin 3 was originally released on July 13 in the year 2013 in Japan and August 4, 2013 on the US. And for those who are familiar with the franchise, Pikmin is a real strategy game where the player takes control of a captain who can command small creatures called Pikmin, who help the player in their goal. They come in different kinds and sizes, with different abilities that will allow the captain to retrieve collectibles into the ship. Uh, I will get into the details of the Pikmin later, but just, just bear with me for a second, okay? The story is nothing groundbreaking for the franchise, but it is something that will give us an explanation, especially for the fans of the franchise, of why we are back here on the Pikmin planet for the third time. Once upon a time, there was a planet called Kopai. In this planet lived the Kopaites. Kopaites, Kopaites, Kopoyos, I don't know. Their population started growing really fast. And because of that, uh, the, the food consumption was rising as well. As the food supply will diminish, they start sending scout vessels to find a planet that had edible food. And as time passed, they will start losing hope as each one of the scout vessels will return without success. But, but then, as everyone lost hope, their last scout vessel returned with information about a planet called PNF... PNF-404 It had the information that they needed This planet had a lot of food This was the Copaid's last hope they, So they sent three brave explorers called Alf or Space Engineer, Brittany, a botanist and Charlie or Fearsome Captain to retrieve the seeds that they needed so desperately so they could grow food once more Okay, so I know, I know it's weird, it's like, oh, Zapping, what is this PNF404 thingy, right? Well, so basically, uh, that's how, like, these little guys, the, co the Copoyos, uh, identify, like, that's the name that they gave, uh, the Pikmin planet, okay? Anyway, let's go back to the story. As the group traveled to the Pikmin planet, everything was going good, but once they reached the planet's atmospheres, the, their ship, called the SS Drake, it started malfunctioning and it ejected all of all three of her big explorers before crashing into the into the planet. I mean, I feel like this is like the best plot of all time, right? Like we got we got like uh, people starving, we got hope, we got uh, o o o heroes, and then they're already facing trouble. So what what could it else, right? It's just, just I, I hope these guys get the Golden Pikmin Award for Red Storytelling, right? <laughs> anyway, at this point, this is where the game starts. The game teaches us how to play, teaches us how to call the Pikmin, how to throw them, how to dissolve your Pikmin, how to make your Pikmin charge in the battle, and, and much more. All of these abilities can be used to retrieve fruit, but it is not limited to that. Since there are actually four, uh, four types of collectibles. But let's start with the mechanics. One of the first and main mechanics of the game is the day and night mechanic. The way it works is that the game tells us that at night there is a lot of nocturnal predators. I mean, right? This is the night. Duh. So, because of this increase of predators, it is just recommended to use sleep the planet like at least reach like the atmosphere, whatever. Just go into space for a little bit until until the next day starts. Um, 
it is also uh, uh, the, the days are actually not that long. I'd say somewhere around that, I guess, like 30 minutes. But one of like, the important things is that if you forget any Pikmin, or if, they, if they're doing a task and they're not with the com with the captain or actually like inside the radius of the ships, uh, they will get hunted and they will actually end up dying. But to mitigate like this issue, the game allows us to play as the three captain. Like I said, Alf, Brittany, and Charlotte. We can use them either like as a group or separately. But one of like the new additions of the game is the, the rally mechanic. With the rally mechanic, it lets you it let us use the the Wii U's gamepad so we could just control what area do you want each captain to go to allowing us to do as much uh, multitasking as we can. It is really useful since we, uh, out the work splitting between uh, three commanders, you could just be doing, uh, for example, you could just send one to explore, you can send another one to collect some fruit, you could send another one to go fight some enemies, etc, etc. It is a really useful mechanic. Now that the basic controls are covered, let's talk about the collectibles. The main objective is to collect fruit. At the beginning of the game, the player starts with 3 bottles of juice. But as more fruit is collected, at the end of each day, all of the fruit gets analyzed and processed, using them to fill new bottles of juice. Depending on the fruit and its size, it might give from half a bottle up, up to 3 bottles each. So the more fruit you collect, uh, the more balls you can get. And basically, for every extra bottle that you earn, that means an extra day of exploration I inside this planet. Another type of collectible are the upgrades that the player can pick, such as damage resistance, or even immunity to certain hazards like, for example, fire or electricity. Those are 100% optional, since their use can depend from person to person, but they can really help a lot. Uh, personally speaking, I only needed I only needed one, it's called the Dodge Whistle. This one gives the ability to the captains to, and, and the pigment to be able to roll and this could be super useful since you could use it to dodge attacks. I use it mainly for bosses, also special thanks to uh, Venturi and Twitch user Future Day Zero for helping me to find this size so they couldn't, so they couldn't remember his, lo his location. And um, now that I mentioned that, one of like, the literal worst things that you can experience in this game is losing your pigment because like the scream is like like you see you see them so cute but then you see them getting in it by like this guy so he's just like ah and, like the, the, the was scream and it will just get into my mind every time i lose them like god it's so traumatic <laughs> okay not that i mentioned my past trauma with the game you may be wondering how do we get more pigment well, this is the next type of collectible. Items that increase the, the Pikmin population. This can be the color palette with numbers, giving you the amount that it says on top, as long as you retrieve with, with Pikmin of the same color. Besides the pellets, another thing we can uh, retrieve are the, actually the corpses of the enemies we defeat in the game. Uh, some people might call this uh, natural selection. Yeah, if you're familiar with that term. Because there is a lot of murder in this game. Especially the bosses are like the biggest way to grow your Pikmin army. Also, while I was always writing this, I would, I would like to make a note that uh, re Nintendo recently has released a, a series of animations for, for Pikmin that are like super good, but there is like well, just one that just stuck into my, got stuck into my mind, okay? They basically, there's like a part that they show the Pikmin getting eaten by the monsters and it's kind of weird and he, and later there's a part where they actually start tearing off the skin of a monster in the official nintendo channel like it was so bad or i guess comically right but they even have like to blurry they had to censor the thing <laughs> anyway let's get back on track the last type of collectible led to ones that drop from the bosses and allow us to reach a new area of the game or progress with the plot. Because of that, we can unlock like new areas, for example. There is actually a total of five areas in the game. Uh, they go from like different terrain, like for example, we got like a like a snow area, a beach, a river, and others. Okay. Inside of these locations, we can find a, a lot of fruit across the place. Some are in plain sight, some others 
require you to like dig around it to find it some others require you to think it's like set up like a puzzle setup so you can uh, try to coordinate the captains and the pigments so you can retrieve it but also every ball you defeat gives you like a really like a really big fruit as well okay i feel like i have talked about, about how the game works about the captains about the collectibles but let's get like into the main mechanic the pigment they come in different types, uh, colors and sizes, so let me introduce each of them in, in the main story. Let's start with the red pigmen. they have fire resistance and it's one of the strongest variations of pigmen. They have a little nose, but apparently it turns out to be an actual thorn and apparently they actually use it on combat. Then we got the yellow pigmen. they are immune to electricity, they can also be thrown higher than the rest due to their lack of weight, making them one of the best options for re to reach higher places like really tall places the blood pigment is one of the most useful its ability may not look like much but they are like the only kind that can go across the water they really help a lot since some of the paths in the game might be a little long because there's like a body of water that is needed to be crossed around or crossed on top of it but with with the help of the blood pigment they can really just uh, help skip those portions there is also the rock pigment. There are new kind of pigment in this game. This pigment's body is rock solid, and it helps at the moment of attacking. So you're literally throwing a rock at an enemy. <laughs> now add that you can have 100 of these little guys in the field. <laughs> the body also allows to break anything that is crystal. Sometimes some fruit is in inside the crystal, and there are also some uh, barriers made of glass. Last but not least, uh, we got the, the pink pigmen. They are the second new addition to the pigmen family. These little fellas have wings and can soar to the sky. They can leave bridges that other pigmen can, can reach. They can also engage in aerial combat. They are really useful since scaring objects with them can help a lot of, uh, can help avoid obstacles. They have a downside which is that they are the weakest kind of pigmen. Due to that, their carrying speed is slower than the other pigmen, making them slower when they're carrying but it's just basically just a trade-off. The Penguin franchise has always been about exploring the nature of planets, and the game shows the look of the areas, the textures, the waters, the enemies, the grass. It really looks so beautiful. It, like it is really one of the most beautiful games I ever played so far. The game has a lot of tiny details, just like when you hear like the crystals and, gra and, and glass breaking. Uh, it, it really feels a, a lot. I really feel uh, satisfied breaking them. Not gonna lie. Talking on like a broken pot that you can actually like rebuild or actually like the bridges. It, it, it feels really natural to the sound of their step, for example. There is one optional feature that is like the possibility to see the game in the captain eyes. You can actually even take pictures about it. You can see like the beautiful scenery across the place, and it's amazing. You can also see. <laughs> You can also see the freaking. You can also see your your pigment army behind you and see like, oh, like how they look at you, or even like the monsters. It is really a joy for the eye. Not gonna lie. Not everything is perfect though, since due to the graphics, some sometimes the game will have like a slower frame rate, but that's only whenever there is a lot of particles effect yeah, going around. Uh, I feel like I mainly found this in the whenever you're retrieving like. Like the corpses of the of the bosses or like the massive fruits. The one that surprised me the most is whenever the juice balls are getting filled, sometimes it will actually like lower the frame rate. It will lag a little bit. So yeah. It's not the game breaking. Like and it's just like a uh, like a small issue, not gonna lie. But one of like my my biggest complaint in the game is the uh, the pigment artificial intelligence. Like don't get me wrong, it works. It really works, and there is a lot of like there is a lot of improvements from Pikmin 2 to Pikmin 3, and a massive gap from Pikmin 1 to 3. Okay, but there were like sometimes where you just see some of Pikmin fall into the water for no reason, or they will just go down of a platform, or even get stuck into a corner, forcing them to stay idle. If you cannot like, if they cannot make their way back to the captain. And then when the sunset approaches, it becomes like really hard to find these little guys. Especially because you're you're in a rush, you're trying to recover as many of them as you can. 
and I feel like maybe you could just like try fixing it up by um, making like the little uh, marks in the map, you know, like blink, being like, oh, here I am, please come get me up, you know? Now let's get into spoiler territory. If you're planning to try the game by yourself, skip to, to this timestamp in the video so you can avoid getting spoiled. After this point, you're watching this at your own risk, okay? Don't blame me after I gave you a warning, okay? We good? So let's go. Let's talk about the bosses. It, it is a staple in the Pikmin franchise that the creatures in the game are really huge, making it be shown that power comes from the numbers and not from the size. But in the case of the bosses, they're really huge. They're massive. Each one of them has something that makes you think, what well, should be the way to fight him? I'll, I'll be talking about each one of the bosses and how the story progresses, so again, last warning for spoilers, okay? The first boss that we get is called the Armored Maldad. In short, it's a massive centipede looking creature that has an armor all across its body. In the story, Alf and the recently rescued Brittany arrive with an army of red and rock pigment that allows them to break their armor that turns out to be similar to the kind of glass that rock pigment can break. They defeat it and encounter what looks like a massive old sulfur. They carry it up back to their ship and allows them to go to the next area. After they do that, Alf and Brittany arrive at the distant thunder. In an incident at their first arrival, they get separated again, but this allows Brittany to help the yellow pigment survive by conducing electricity to turn on a light bulb. They manage to reunite again, then as they explore the area, they find the second boss named Behemoth Postbat. It's a creature that lies in the dark depths of a cave. At the beginning of the game, actually, we see Captain Charlie getting attacked by this creature, most likely getting eaten by it. He can turn invisible due to the darkness of the cave, so our two captains use the yellow pigment to illuminate the cave, and once that was done, the real fight will begin. After they defeat the monster, Captain Charlie will find a note inside the monster, telling them that Captain Olimar found a device that the three captains lost, the cosmic drive key. Without the key, they will not be able to go back home. After that happens, the three of them finally reunited. They decided to go back to the tropical was the first area that Alf was in, in there to find a new signal. So the three of them managed to get there, hoping it'd be Captain Olimar, but in reality, it was actually the third boss. This time, the boss is the sun belching mirror look. Yeah, I don't even know how they come with the, with the name of these guys. A massive creature that looks like an eel, but it is also looked like a slug. It can throw rocks, and due to the arena being mainly sand, the slug is able to change the elevation of the area, making it higher so it's harder to reach for the pigmen, and it can also make it lower, dropping anything that, is, that gets stuck in, uh, below it. Once they're fitting it, they get another cell phone and a massive watermelon. They retrieve everything, allowing them to reach a, a brand new area. This place is called the Twilight River. This is where the captains get an emergency transmission of a new character. Due to the low signal of the transmission, not everything can be heard correctly. So the three captains assume that whomever this person is, is actually, is actually Captain Olimar. So they go on a rescue mission, they manage to find the pink pigmen, and with their help, they, f they reach the location of the transmission. As they arrive, they find Captain Olimar, follows living there, but as they try to take him back, the next boss arrives. This time, the boss is the Scarlet Maestro. He looks like a mix of a bird and an insect, with a large harp looking big, allowing it to take control of 100 little Scornets that he uses to abduct Captain Olimar. Our fist of heroes managed to take it down after figuring out that his weakness is attacking once his enemies goes away. They take Captain Olimar. Back to their ship so they could recover the cosmic dry key. But then something happened. The next morning, while the captains were asleep, Captain Olimar will pilot the ship, landing at the Gardens of Hope, but not only that, he will run away. After that happens, not only he escaped, but he also stole all of the juice balls, and most importantly, he stole the captain's rubber duck. Because of his escape, he opened a new area of the garden. The three captains find and help the blue pigmen, 
Finally having all of the Pikmin ties to their disposal, they adventure into this new area only to find out the next boss, the the Quadrilo Miracle Mir Miraclops Mir Miracle. I don't know. It is inside a crystal, but once it's, it breaks free, it will show the massive bulb on top of a rock-like area with three long legs. The captain managed to make it fall and attack it. After an intense fight, they find Captain Olimar's ship, and they, they manage to recover the southern goods as this time get Captain Olimar tied up to prevent him escaping again. Okay, so by this point, you guys probably realized that I uh, say his name in a different tone it must mean something, right? Well, fans of the French already know that this guy is actually called Louis, Captain Solemar's partner. He, he finally reveals the crew the location of the real Captain Solemar and that he has been captured. So the brave hero decide to go to the Formidable Log to rescue him. As they arrive, they find a strange golden creature. You will see it cooling with Olimar, but as the captain decides to approach it, it absorbs Olimar, creating a huge golden defense. They attack it until it breaks out, turning into a liquid. Freeing Olimar, they decide to take him back to the ship, but turns out the pygmy doesn't know what's the right way to go, so Brittany decides to beat the guy for them. They go inside the oak to only be presented with the last challenge of the game, a score mission through a series of puzzles and locations. But the difference is that the liquid of the creature they defeated was chasing them now. Once the three captains made it out of the oak, they managed to engage the creature, the plas the plasm raid. The plas the plasm raid. This creature can change its properties, but the idea is to make the golden pieces that throw or fall off to be destroyed by the Pikmin before the creature will absorb the back. If that happens, the creature will recover some of its strength. The creature can change its properties as the fight goes, transforming its body into bodies of water, fire, electron, and crystal that the corresponding Pikmin can tackle. Once the creature is defeated, a fearsome heroes manage to rescue and help Captain Olima, the real one. He apologizes for the trouble that Louis caused and gave them their cosmic drive key. The game ends now as all five of them go back to their planet with the SS Drake. Okay, so after all of this, I'm not gonna spoil uh, the ending, but let me tell you that the ending that you get is based on the amount of the amount of fruit that you recover across the game. And no matter what, no matter what, at the end we get to see our lovely pigmen vibing and chilling across the place in this beautiful credit sequence that leads up to something crashing into the planet once again, and the pigmen head out to investigate. Maybe this could be a lead, uh, lead for Pikmin 4, but who knows? I believe that the sales of, of the new Pikmin 3 Deluxe can be the ones to determine if it's gonna be a, a new Pikmin game. Since a Pikmin being the newest game of the of the franchise received poor, sc poor score reviews. But if Pikmin 4 happens, I'll make sure to check it out when it comes out. I feel like Pikmin 3 is overall like a really good experience. It makes sure the the player understands the value of multitasking, but it can also be played with without that. There can be a lot of ways to replay the game, for example, uh, aiming to not lose any pigmen, or try to recover all of the fruit in the short amount of time of days. And with the release of Pigmen 3 Deluxe, there are also some new changes, for example, trying extra content like like playing uh Captain Nolimar and Louis on their arrival back on the planet. And since it's on the Switch. Being able to play on the go is always re uh, a really cool feature. I recommend the game to everyone, since it is really one of the games uh, that we had to have back on today. If any of you guys want to try it out, there is already a demo on the, on the Nintendo eShop for the Switch that lets you carry the progress to the full game, and even gives you a new difficulty setting if you manage to, to finish the demo. The full game is around the corners as it was released on October 30th, so... Please check it out. Oh, I think this is enough preview for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Tell me in the comments which which one is your favorite Pikmin. And if you really like the video, consider supporting me on Patreon. This video was selected by amazing patrons Anime Dog and Nikki, who are the best in the world. You guys rock and I love you so much. That is all for me. I am Sepi64. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!